welcome to the CSR Universe Leaders Talk segment. And today we have the privilege of hosting two extraordinary individuals who are leaving an indelible mark on the lives of those affected by cleft conditions in India. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Ms. Mamta Kari. She's the Senior Vice President and Regional Director Asia of Smile Train, the world's largest cleft-focused organization. And Ms. Sarika Singh, a very talented Indian actor who has triumphed over her own cleft palate journey and has now joined hands with Smile Train to drive the mission forward. And together they are instrumental in destigmatizing cleft conditions and raising awareness among people. Notably, Smile Train recently achieved a significant milestone of uh, serving 7 lakh beneficiaries, and which is a testament to their unwavering dedication and impact. And furthermore, we are fortunate to have this discussion coincide with the very prestigious CleftCon India 2023, an event organized by Smile Train, which brings together individuals who have got the treatment to come together on a platform and share their inspiring stories. So in this esteemed discussion, Mamta and Sarika will be sharing their insights on these initiatives of Smile Train and the significance of CleftCon the transformative power of cleft palate treatment and their inspiring efforts in empowering others. We extend a very warm and enthusiastic welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So, um, so to begin with, I would start with Bonta. I would like to congratulate the entire team of uh, Smile Train for you know achieving this great milestone of serving seven lakh beneficiaries and organizing today's CleftCon India. So tell me, uh, what are the primary goals and mission of CleftCon India 2023? And how does this event align with the broader mission of uh, and objectives of Smile Train? Again. So thank you, uh, the CSR universe, firstly, for inviting us, for talking about this cause, for talking about clefts. And, uh, you know, through your channel, uh, I know you all are you know you are the best and uh, you know in in your field and you're doing such great work and i've read a lot about you all so um, people you are influencers in the right sense and therefore it is so important that people like you talk about the cause and take this message forward so thank you all for considering smile and inviting sarika and i to talk about this so first of all, that. Secondly, as you said that I know, I'm sure you know about Smile Train, Ruchika, because you did mention a lot of things about Smile Train already. But as a cleft focus organization, as an organization which really focuses on this birth difference, that how can we uh, support children and young people and you know people who are born with this difference into not really talking about as a difference into normalizing their life and and yes. their world into you know better integration so that whatever stigma is there today in our country when people talk about a birth difference or they look at you in a different sense mm. that is not there so mm. the entire focus of the cleft con is that is just that that listen hold on this is not a this is nothing which is so different from you know, uh, 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 you and I, everybody is the same. Everything is okay. Yeah. If people are born or they are, they are made a little differently, so that's their uniqueness. That's their speciality. So what? Big deal, right? And as an organization, as an organization which is really focusing on the treatment of this birth difference, this is our primary focus where we know that people who are literate, people who are well-read, people who are influencers can go out there and spread the message that mm. listen, this is the difference. It is a medical difference, but can also be corrected medically. It is not, you know, the curse of gods or whatever it is in our country, you know, people kind of associate this problem with, it is none of that. Mm. Yes. It is a little, you know, uh, medically uh, people, uh, children born are a little different and that difference can be corrected uh, and everything can be handled in a, in a manner by smile train experts because, you know, we have a model. We only work with local doctors. We have a sustainable model where we have partner hospitals. We have like 140 partner hospitals in all 29 states of India, in 110 cities of India, wow. more than about 500 doctors all over. 
So therefore, these are experts because they have been empowered by Smile Chain, by given the training, given the funding, given the know-how to enable all of this for completely free for children and people who cannot just afford. Yes, people are very fortunate. People are lucky. People like Sarika who've been, you know, have had by the grace of God privileged upbringings and privileged background. They right. have their family support. They've had the treatment available. Mm -hmm. Come to this forum and talk about it. But remember, there are many, many out there who are not that fortunate. Mm -hmm. One, firstly, who did not have this awareness ki bhai ye theek bhi ho sakta. Mm -hmm. Right. Ki ye, this is correctable. Second, even if they did, they did not have the wherewithal. They did not have the resources. Hmm. To kind of go and, uh, you know, get the, the good treatment, get a good quality treatment, uh, you know, to at the next hospital or wherever. They didn't hmm. have the wherewithal to take the child there. So they had their lack of resources. They had their own challenges. They're, you know, dealing with, for let's say, poverty or illiteracy or some other thing. Hmm. And then cleft wood was not a priority. Right? Right. Because they right. felt that, oh, this is a cosmetic thing. We go to a plastic surgeon, it'll be fixed. Yeah. So therefore all the more reason for things like cleft corn to spread that awareness for you know people influencers like sarika and others who are at that position today that whatever they will say people will listen to them they will influence for them to come forward and talk about it to help others who are not that privileged and uh, you know fortunate that you know they can get the intervention or the treatment uh, at the right time, at the right age, and they do not have that family support or the community support for them. This is what that initiative is all about. Absolutely. So I'll come to Sarika and ask something. Uh, Sarika, what has inspired you to share your cleft journey and become an advocate on the cleft for the cleft community? How has your personal experience shaped your perspective? repeat the question i was saying what what inspired you to share your story and how has this personal experience and journey of yours shaped your uh, perspective so see when i was growing up other than my parents i didn't have anybody to motivate me or to tell me ki, oh you shouldn't feel like this this is how you should feel parents do it they do it out of love they do it out of concern they want to shape you you know a certain way but I really wish, you know, if I had any support which these children have through Smile Train India, if I had little, you know, even like a one inch of it, I think I would have been a different person. You know, what I am now, I maybe I, I wouldn't have wasted my uh, 20 years, you know, my, my entire college life, my school life thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'm, I'm something different. I'm something inferior. You know, OK, I, I don't look good enough. I, you know, so many things that you've battled through. And you've damaged yourself, you know, in this whole journey. Mm. I think uh, it would have, you know, so I thought if I mm. can bring that little inch of change in anybody's life, uh, that was my uh, objective. And uh, I think uh, these guys really motivated me to be on board. It was just a single message that they had sent. And I read the message and I was overwhelmed by it because I was like, okay, okay, I, I, I you know, I, I I've always been a little shy as a person and I've always been, uh, what do you call it? You know, you always are a little uh, So I said, this is my time to, you know, now take this courage and uh, be there. And if I can inspire even one person, I think uh, my seva is done. That's wonderful. So that was my uh, thing when I thought of Smile Train and I was like, okay, yes, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm coming for it. That's wonderful, Sarika. So, Mamta, coming back to you know awareness, I think you know that this kind of inclusivity uh, will come only with greater sensitization and, of course, awareness. Awareness is even among the among the people who have cleft conditions to first know that there are treatments available. So, uh, Mamta, how does Smile Train address the challenges of awareness, affordability, and accessibility in providing cleft care in India? Okay. Yes, absolutely. So awareness, affordability, accessibility, and Smile Train actually supports all of these three pillars that you just said. Uh, awareness, awareness really happens 
um, hand in hand. And, you know, I was just telling Sarika and the others today that awareness ke liye jitna karo kam hai. The more you do, the less it is. Because, you know, we are sitting here in a city like a Pune and talking about clefts and you catch somebody, you know, roaming around the hotel, you say, you know what, do you know about clefts? Have you ever seen? Is it achha? What is that? Ah, right. So if in the, if in an urban population, in a person, you're talking to an educated human being and you're talking to those, you're talking to the privileged lot and you, you actually kind of assume that, oh, in to pata hoga. they will know, right? They would have read about it or whatever it is, right? Even they are surprised and shocked. Oh, I we didn't even know about it that one in 700 children are born with a, a cleft in our country and 35,000 children in our country are born with this uh, difference every year. So you can imagine what is really happening in the remote locations of our country, in a UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, in all of those tribal belt. So therefore, our our work and our uh, kind of responsibility in this area is huge. So the more we do, we feel, oh, Abito, we haven't even, you know, reached, uh, uh, you know, it's not even the tip of the thing, right? So again, it's it's like a it's a par- partnership because as a lean organization, as an as an NGO, as a charity, we we have to be very very careful where we are spending the resources because you know resources are limited so donors giving us money for x y and z now how do we combine all of this we have to get into partnerships so how do we get into partnerships we do it with the government so we work very closely with the rbsk team the ashas the anganwadis they're doing fantastic work because when they, when they go out and do their you know vaccination campaigns or a polio campaign or whatever they also include smile train they also include clefts so they spread the message and they say, okay, if they find children with, um, you know, this d- difference, then they have a list of smart in hospitals and they are kind of, you know, helping us, helping those children actually get to our hospitals. That is one. We also have partnerships with other organizations like the Border Security Force or the Shastra Seema Bal. Again, these kind of partnerships for awareness where they go out, where we tell those forces that whenever, you know, they go to back on beyond places where no one, else, no one, you know, we cannot go there. Right. They're so difficult. They're difficult terrain because remember that there are people there, they need the medical intervention. All the more reason because health infrastructure and, you know, is still a challenge in our country. <laughs> yes, there is things happening, but it is you know, some years away. It is a journey. So how do we do that? We do that in partnership. Then we also have partnership with medical associations and, uh, you know, organizations like we have a partnership with FOGSI for early detection. All the gynecologists, they have like 35 to 39,000 gynecological uh, OBS, OBG and, uh, you know, gynae uh, members. So to educate them so that when they are talking to uh, expectant mothers and in the scans, if there is a baby who is uh, likely to be born with a cleft, they know exactly what to do with that. We have a protocol for that. So that model, partnership model is absolutely essential. No one agency can work alone. Then when we talk about affordability, that's when the smart and funding comes into being because we just don't uh, fund the surgery. Mm-hmm. we fund the comprehensive cleft care treatment, which is surgery is just one part of the treatment, right? The counseling, the psychosocial support, the feeding instruction, the dental support, the orthodontics, the speech therapy, mm-hmm. everything is supported by smart chain. There's not even one rupee is to be charged to the patient, right? Mm-hmm. And how does the affordability come? Because of the generosity of our donors, because of donors, individual and corporate donors in India, because of corporate donors like Bajaj, like, you know, uh, uh, other people like Asha Hastra Trust, like, you know, other donors, we have a whole list and we can share those with you. So generosity of those organizations who are giving to Smile Chain to help these children further. And therefore, the affordability part is taken care of because nothing is charged to the beneficiary. And we are very strict about it. Then comes the accessibility. The accessibility factor basically is the spread, the scale and scope of our programs. So our programs in India are like so large that in 110 cities, so everywhere, you don't have to travel like a, 
a thousand kilometers or like six hundred kilometers to get to a smart train center. Mm. You at the most you have to travel like two hundred. I'm just saying max max two hundred kilometers or something to find the nearest smart train center. And then we also because we also facilit uh, facilitate transport. Okay. So we are paying the Sanika Rasta the coming and going because remember that. these uh, we are talking about the most marginalized populations mm -hmm. so they get to the hospital you can't just say ke theek hai phone karke ki ja aap pahunch jana ha you know how will you reach you don't even know you don't even have that 500 rupees to afford the bus fare or the train fare yes. because that is a meal for the next 3 days for you if i'm working as a daily wage laborer in some khet right so smile train will take care of that because smile train says okay not a problem we will give you this bus fare or we will send our outreach workers or we will send our vans through our partner hospitals we have social workers we have outreach workers they will go they will take out the vans and they will go and get those people there mm -hmm. or they will facilitate the transport so all of this entire framework is taken care of just to say ki ck free surgery is is not uh, is not the solution right because mm -hmm. there's so much more than the surgery surgery is just one part of it mm -hmm. so all of that is facilitated by us all of that is taken care of by smile team okay amazing so, i just had a question about um, um, just for my information and even other yeah. people who are hearing it that yeah. uh, there's a protocol about uh, when you um, are able to diagnose that okay uh, the child uh, an unborn child probably has a condition so um, what is the protocol like uh, what do mothers have to do after that and what is the youngest age at which you can actually perform this surgery mm -hmm. and after that how much time does it take for full recovery just uh, i know you're not a, i mean it's a doctor's advice but uh, you would be knowing so so sure. so when the first thing is uh, the um, when a uh, 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 expectant mother is likely to have a child with a cleft there is support which is required there's a psychosocial element in that which is very important absolutely first is that so the goal of smile chain um, programs is to provide that first mm -hmm. to get the mother the parents uh, the 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 family and the community ready i mean family because you know then there will be like a this thing with the community so to counsel them and tell them the entire treatment pathway to tell them to educate them through the whole you know um, like there is a there is a system there is there are resources there are uh, things which are already in place for these kind of situations mm -hmm. when we get to know this is 1 2 3 4 this is the next steps then you come to the birth of the baby right so then the parents already know the mother is prepared it's not a surprise everything is taken care of at the birth of the child the most important is the feeding which is so essential yes. because if the mouth and the lip are open and op and and there are various permutation combinations of cleft so i, I you know i can't give like a cookie cutter uh, you know response to mm -hmm. this but i'm just saying that depending on the condition of the severity of the condition the first of all the mother is taught or counseled on the feeding techniques because those are specialized techniques they, these children if the palate is open and the lip is open are not able to suckle at the mother's breast for breast milk which is mm. all of us know which is so very important so feeding instructions is absolutely the first thing that happens after the baby is born mm. and then when the child is healthy enough has the appropriate weight weight Three months is the smile train medical protocol. That before that is just you know regular follow up, uh, uh, monitoring weight, monitoring other if at all health issues you know and small things which have happened regular visits and then the cleft treatment actually starts three months and beyond. Then the you know depending on the doctor's advice on what needs to happen first. Uh, the surgery takes place and the treatment thereafter takes place now again depending on the kind of cleft and the severity of the situation uh, on you know it, it could take one surgery two surgeries probably three or four at at regular intervals not at one time mm -hmm. maybe as the tissues grow as the child grows 
sometimes you know the nose is flat the nose has to be kind of done a rhinoplasty needs to be done and other specialized techniques need to be done mm. so it is definitely uh, at at regular intervals at some you know years depending on the doctor's advice and the doctor's uh, directive that this uh, intervention is actually given so mamta a lot of additional treatments i can see you know along with the surgery are supposed to they, they play a key role especially you know counseling therapy so um, i wanted to know from sarika you know what at what age was uh, your cleft treated and were you also given additional treatments or some kind of therapy and can you share some insights into the positive uh, changes and improvements you have experienced as a result of these additional treatments so i have also underwent three surgeries <clears throat> one was when i was 3 months the second one was when i was 3 years okay. and the last one i did when i was 21 years which was a rhinoplasty and a reconstructive surgery also there was a septum which was deviated so you know there was a breathing issue on the left side because this was the affected area so even that was removed that was a very minor thing and um, see it definitely uh, gives a boost to your confidence you know as you undergo a rhinoplasty or a, a you know cosmetic surgery because uh, suddenly you start feeling uh, happier and uh, you you when you see the difference that okay you know i am l- looking a certain way it definitely boosts your confidence and uh, i honestly didn't really feel anything uh or maybe i'm just uh, not really able to tap into that memory of mine uh i was absolutely fine actually as vamta said na hamara ek jo environment tha wo shayad thoda privileged environment tha to yeah so us uh, you know so maybe that's why i didn't really feel uh, feel mm-hmm. that uh some things uh, the the treatment was fine the after post surgery follow ups everything was fine though uh, i didn't really have any counselor or anything maybe okay. we were not that aware when i was 21 okay uh where are we today where you know i think children are being born in such a lovely time where people are sensitive mm-hmm. and you have counseling you have uh, psychosomatic things you have so many uh psychosocial uh, support system which i don't think so we we were even aware of you know you did have counselors in your college but that's about it like i never imagine taking a, a, a professional treatment from somebody now yes now we are much more aware and things are much more handy but uh, in my growing up days aisa kuch nahi tha ya hoga bhi to i wasn't aware so uh, coming back to awareness mamta uh, what exactly are the key focus areas of your awareness campaign especially you know to reduce the stigma around these uh, this condition yeah so ruchika a uh, cleft corn i think is a major awareness initiative um which is uh, really um you know contributes to demystifying and saying that listen it's absolutely fine um this is an annual event and before the event during the event and after the event there is so much of talk about it so i'm i'm overwhelmed actually by the response and i'm really overwhelmed by all of this which is happening and uh, you know my team and influencers like sarika there are others as well who are doing such a fantastic job just talking about it because we did you know start talking about it even before uh the main event happened so i think this is amazing this is fantastic and then we have you know we have medical conferences we have other conferences uh, which is again uh, only focused on this uh, uh difference and we brainstorm about the cause and we brainstorm about a lot of things the, and um, also we have uh, events like um you know when we have events on on awareness drives like uh, we do uh, you know we do fundraisers for example okay. not and we haven't really kind of um 
started uh, doing those in India, which we will do. This is again, as I said, that these are forthcoming plans of sensitizing schools, uh, going, uh, you know, awareness with um, doing a school program. That's great. Uh, children and with you know teachers because remember you know children are like you know need to be sensitized about this because when all the bullying and things come yes. from their own peers right so yeah. uh, therefore to make children aware of this to talk about this I yeah. think this is a forthcoming initiative of Smile Train India to talk about this and definitely we are also going to do um uh, you know, uh, uh, even these programs with um, uh, other organizations uh, like, uh, you know, these um, medical institutions, you know, whether it's an anesthesia institution, whether it's a nursing an institution or a dental in institution, we have milestone days, for example, we have the dental day, we celebrate World Smile Day, which is in October. And this year, we are going to also do the World Smile Day. Uh, which is going to really talk about how the smile actually changes everything and how you can smile irrespective of whether a cleft or a no cleft. How does it really matter, right? A smile is a smile is a smile, okay? So these are things that, uh, uh, you know, we there are initiatives, there are things that we keep doing all the time. Mm -hmm. And through people like you, I think you all are doing a fantastic job by inviting us and talking about this because remember that your reach is, you know, the, the kind of people who listen to you or who are seeing this show, who will listen, to, uh, you know, to see this show in the future, they will also know about something, okay? They will know about clefts. They will also talk about these uh, things. So therefore, I think the media plays a very, very, very important mm -hmm. role in helping us with this. So I, I look forward to a deeper engagement with you all on, on this initiative and perhaps in the future as well. So we can talk about other things as well uh, sometime later. Likewise, it would be a privilege, of course. Privilege, yes. So, Mamba, I, I just wanted to know that Smile actually follows a model which is called a uh, teacher man to fish model. Can you elaborate on that and the benefits that it gives to its patients and local communities? Right. So, teach a man to fish a model is all about um, empowerment, mm -hmm. is equal to empowerment. So, when Smile Chain was, um, you know, came into being, and we were very, very clear when, you know, uh, Smile Chain was born uh, about 22 uh, years ago, 23 years ago, we said that, listen, we will only work with local doctors. We will not, we, we, we knew about um, organizations and charities and NGOs who were flying in foreign missions, okay, who, who were flying in foreign doctors who would come uh, do like a camp, um, uh, and do some treatments and surgeries and you know for you know a period of time like 10 days or whatever two weeks and then they would go back so we said no 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 this is not a sustainable model we will never be like this we will be then we said that we will be a te teacher man to fish model which means that we will give the know-how we will do training we will do give the resources we will give the funding we will do everything so that the local community, the local people can take care of their own problems. Their yeah. own work. So therefore, yeah. uh, you know, how, this is how this teacher man to fish model is, which means that in India, the, the India programs is run and driven by the Indian doctors, by doctors, by whether it's doctors or whether it's cleft care providers, it's counselors, it's nurses, it's speech therapists, it's orthodontists, it's counselors, everything is local. We would not fly in a mission to you know, provide this cleft care to our children. Um, people who are just visitors here and we know they will go back somewhere mm -hmm. because this is a, this is a, a treatment which is like, it's, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. We want the local team to be a partner in that journey for them to partner with this with this child or this family or this parent to take them through all those steps and not just going to go away one day, right? And we also wanted the treatment to be accessible 24-7 to uh, someone. Not just, you know, if they have a problem or they have some complication or something or the other or some advice, that, or generally they want to kind of come back to the hospital to get to know, how to eat, 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 how to
there should be someone to answer all those questions for for the family for the for the patient for the child and therefore smile train said that listen we will only provide the know how so we have a, the world's best protocol on cleft management on cleft treatment whether it is surgery whether it is safety and quality which is our priority whether it's dental whether it's speech whether it's counseling we have the world's who's who who has developed this and then we take all of this and then we distribute it and then we make all of our partner hospitals follow that so yes they have to work within our safety parameters within our uh, technical protocols of the treatment but we we empower them to come up to this level if at all there is missing otherwise this is all fantastic if at all there is a little gap we empower them to do that smile train is is very very training focused we are very very strong in terms of training as well and then we uh, you know we empower them to come to this level and then provide the cleft care so this entire system or the ecosystem uh-huh. is all about local local and local and that's it that's great so how many medical professionals we can just given a uh, approximate idea are working with you or um, the number of hospitals that you are engaging with right so we have like 140 hospitals in india alone and we have about 1100 plus around the world uh, india is the largest program of smile train with uh, as i said 140 we are in 110 cities in the country and we are in all of the states and we work with more than 500 plus doctors in the country wow. that's a wow that's amazing so are you also you know leveraging the new technologies innovative solutions that you know academic you know academias like your iits and the iims are providing some kind of a lab you know sustainability lab so i uh, what kind of technologies are you leveraging you know to expedite your efforts and if you could also you know uh, shed some light on the current trends and treatments that are available today right so yes you asked a very pertinent question and smiltin is really proud to say that we really use i mean you know technology is like a is 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 um is a smiltin soul we use technology to a large extent in and that there's a reason for that remember that we are a charity we are an ngo if we have if we spend a lot on admin and too many people like we have like a battery of people doing manual things and manual work mm-hmm. we will never be sustainable we will never be you know this uh, efficient in terms of costs how do you do that you have fewer people and you have technology to help you and that's exactly what you're doing i mean uh, today at the cleftcon uh, about you know uh, 60% of my india team is here how what is 60% 60% is like five people oh that's it with 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 a with a with a program of the size of india where we are supporting 38000 surgeries every year this six people five people for cleft con i mean i handle asia so i don't call myself just an india person but uh, the india programs team is like just a handful ek do teen char that's it okay north south east west and there you go but how do we do that because we are very very strong in terms of using technology so we have the world's largest archive and database on clefts which is the world's largest which means that any partner who's doing as we speak when they're doing the treatment they are uploading to smiltrain express which is like houses all of these records so at a click of a button today just now i can click and see what is happening in varanasi i can click and see what is happening in a chennai which hospital which child is being operated on and all the records hmm. kis kis side ka cleft hai bilateral hai unilateral hai rhinoplasty hui hai ki cleft hmm. palate hua hai ki hmm. ye hua hai ya abg hua hai all the technical information is there all the medical information is there who has done the surgery everything so the entire data is available and all of that is online we have a system of online quality assessment Okay. which is so important because then how do you decide the uh, the quality of the surgery right right sure. so there's an quality assurance system which again is driven online then you know some of it is then you know kind of assessed offline as well but by our medical advisory boards and by our medical advisory councils who 
are basically a group of the who's who in surgery and anesthesia and dental and psychosocial. So all of these top doctors come together. Their service to Smileton is totally voluntary. So they don't charge us anything. They are with the organization because this, they feel that we are doing the right thing. Mm. We are an ethical organization. We are an efficient organization. And therefore, they want to be associated with us. So all the medical decisions are taken by this board. Mm. Everything. Mm. So they help us do that with quality assurance. Technology, everything. We have resources like we call this uh, like a virtual virtual simulators. Okay. So we recently acquired Simulair. Simulair is a division of Smile Train. Simulair is, an, uh, is a company which manufactures models. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the team will be able to share more information on Simulair with you all. But I can only tell you that we manufacture models. Mm -hmm. uh, these are uh, models which teach surgeons mm -hmm. on the cleft surgical techniques. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. So these 3D models are used to teach surgery. And Smile Chain is manufacturing these to teach simulation and surgeries. We also have a virtual surgery simulator, which is used in medical colleges and other colleges, again, to teach cleft surgery. We use, um, uh, you know, other um, virtual reality AI solutions mm -hmm. to decide, the, the assess the quality of the surgeries, whether it's a palate, whether it's a lip, so all of these are being handled and done by Smile Train, driven by our global office, driven by our global team to uh, basically help us managers manage mm. these programs. Otherwise, with, you know, five people or like a 12, 15 people in India, how do you think we can manage this? You know, so yes. if it weren't, you know, there is Smile Train Express, there is quality assurance, there's a check and balance which is happening all the time all the time as we speak and this is really helping us assess uh, the impact of a program and therefore i guess the donors uh, give us and they want to support smile chain because you know we can show tangible impact yes. cleft is such a cause where you can see the difference in like one hour right, right. Mm -hmm. and then as an organization our reporting, I'm really proud to say, is impeccable. I can tell you exactly how I spent your money. I can give you the details. I can give you the patient information. I can give you everything. I can give you who did, uh, you know, the surgery, the surgery that you supported, right? So what do donors look at? Donors look at transparency in the yes. system. Donors look at, uh, you know, uh, honesty. Donors look at ethical organizations who are really, really using their money properly. And Smilegen is all is, is about to, you know, is, is is equipped to provide them with this information. And therefore, we have people like Bajaj and others who are supporting us. That's amazing, Mamta. Really heartening to hear that. So now coming back to Sarika again. Now Sarika, since you've joined hands with. Smile Train, how do you envision your partnership, your collaboration, making a difference in raising awareness and also reducing the stigma surrounding cleft conditions? What are your, uh, you know, what are you going to, you know, give to Smile India? I can, uh, I'm yet to uh, think about all of this, but uh, all my support and uh, all my love is with Smile Train India. Jaise ye bolenge, mein waise karti jaungi. <laughs> because, uh, you know, one can now see ki, okay, there is a whole community out there and uh, I belong to that community and I'm all here, all heart to support them in every possible way that I can, you know, if I can just inspire them, influence them, jaise bhi. Absolutely. Whatever it takes. Your presence is actually, you know, given me, I saw your uh, speech today and I was truly inspired. And, you know, that has kind of, you know, instilled a sense, in, a sense of confidence in me only. You know, I might be having some other problems or issues, but, you know, listening to people like you, you know, gives us a, a great courage and great confidence. And I, I, I think your collaboration with the uh, Smile Train will definitely do a lot of good for people who are there with cleft conditions and not even aware of uh, you know, the treatments. And I also got a lot of things uh, from Smile Train India's uh, cleft con today because, you know, it was like a part of you is speaking there. Yeah. You know, you are in the audience, but yes. still, you know, Kiri, ye to, 
this is me you know so i could just relate and i could just find a whole uh, family out there so yeah this is what my take back is today and as i said in my speech you know some part of me is healed today so i'm happy i'm just so happy being here that's amazing that's amazing so mamta again coming back to you uh, you just said that india uh, you have done really well in india especially so uh, you have reached out to 7 lakh people uh, which state has demonstrated the most success according to you and why do you think you know that state has made uh, more is more successful than the rest of the country what okay. what you know what are the cha- uh, what are the differences there that you know can be replicated by other states and by other cities so can you just you know shed some light on that aspect also right so ruchika it's all it's all about the numbers so it's all as i said that it's 1 in 700 so remember that the states which are most populated will populated. have the yes. most yeah, yeah, will, yeah. will have the most um, you know treatments available and treat, treated children so definitely north india the uh, U, up definitely uttar pradesh has uh, the maximum number of um, children being treated with this condition Okay. Okay. See, Varanasi is my hometown, so I'm aware of Smile Train's work since my college days. This is in 2007-8, yes. so I'm quite aware. I think it was one of the earlier geographies, also. Yes, absolutely, focusing. absolutely. So Varanasi, and we all say, is the cleft capital of the world. Yes, yes. So I'm quite aware, and the kind of phenomenal impact you've had in um, I'd still say it's a short span of time. Mm-hmm. Um, yes i think it's a model that can be replicated by so many social organizations because how brilliantly you are optimizing your resources and um, you cannot say that there's a lag in any um, aspect the technology is top notch the services are top notch beneficiaries are not charged anything it's just amazing and i think there i mean i'm sure you have case studies around your work but i think this should be uh, there should be um, more case studies which social organizations can <laughs> learn from we right? love to feature them and highlight them to our channel yes yes absolutely absolutely a more in depth um work on uh, how they function absolutely right. most welcome so mamta my last question to you is uh, can you just outline you know smile chains long term vision and goals for the next 5 years including your plans to expand impact and reach in india right so aruchika uh, as i said that um comprehensive cleft care is still uh, at a very very beginning uh, level at a very beginning stage i mean it's fantastic to be on these forums and talk about comprehensive cleft care lekin jo reality hai na reality is a little different because we are right now only able to scratch the surface of it we are only providing um you know the surgical treatment now we have to go beyond that so definitely smile train's vision short term medium term long term whatever term it is is to provide the comprehensive cleft care treatment yes there is speech therapy there is orthodontics there is psychosocial support dental support this that and the other in some of the centers but not all so how do we expand that that is one uh, in terms of yes more resources so we obviously need more funding we need to fundraise more especially in india because we know that mm-hmm. there is csr funding available mm-hmm. okay so we want to reach out to those corporates and you know organizations mm-hmm. who, who are able to come forward and support this because if we have more resources we can obviously invest in more of these uh, you know the other aspects of cleft care rather than just just the surgery and um yeah the other is awareness definitely as i said that you know every year there is need to do more and more and more so investment in that uh talking about that uh definitely is is a smile train plan it's a perpetual plan it's a plan in perpetuity which has to be done in any case right yes. but comprehensive cleft care is something which i'm really personally driving uh psychosocial support which i feel is so so very important mm. and then there are other initiatives like you know partnerships with foxy with the gynecological association so again educational uh doing a lot of education and training 
mm. in terms of training the gynecologists because you know they they have the first you know they are the first point of contact they know exactly even you know prenatally what is really happening and, and therefore to educate them on even they are not aware of yeah. the technical aspects of the treatment and what to do and where to do and when to do it so all of these so training uh, awareness uh, comprehensive cleft care are definitely my focus any closing remarks from your end sarika <laughs> keep smiling is what i would say and just just own it just absolutely <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank you and i love that ruby uh, lipstick it actually red your charisma is actually adding to the charm of that lipstick <laughs> please thanks i'm going to don this look for a while now absolutely. great, great, great. thank you thank you shweta thank you richita thank you thank you so much sarika mamta any closing remarks from your end it's been such a pleasure to talk to you ruchika and shweta and i know um, you know this is just the beginning um, we look forward to a further collaboration with you all and your team and to talk about this and to spread the message to help us and i know that you know next time wherever we are for this cleftcon i'm sure you and your team are going to join so thank you so thank much for inviting you. us thank you so much thank, thank you. you thanks a lot